Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we have a 13-speed group set. We talk cargo bikes, we have the bike vault and the weekly talking point. And we also talk about your reaction to materials you would like to see bikes made out of in the future. Let's get going. Come on, James, what's hot in tech this week? Well, to celebrate the 10th anniversary of a bike shop in Switzerland called Obst and Gamus, they've come up with the creation of building an e-cargo bike with the help of Dutch frame builder, Elian Cycles. Imaginatively named the Obst and Gamus by Elian Cycles Ultimate e-cargo, it is the ultimate e-cargo bike, lightweight, high freight machine featuring a Maxon MX25 rear electric hub, helping assist you and your cargo up and down hills. Yeah, it's, it's all well and good having a good motor, but having good steering is also really, really important. And they put a lot of time into this, creating a central steering hub, which keeps it nice and light, even though you've got it fully loaded. And it's actually patented by Elian Cycles uh, because they actually came up with this whole design, which is really yes. cool. It makes yeah. the bike look really nimble, doesn't it? I have to say it does, yeah. And you also said earlier that it comes with, re or you can at least put really wide tires on it, meaning you can probably take it off-road. I know, it could be kind of the start of e-cargo gravel racing. Oh, everyone has to carry a certain amount of cake up front in the cargo bay. No? Oh, yeah. maybe that's just me that wants to carry cake. Beer. Beer, that would work better. But how many beers and cakes could you buy for the price of the bike? Well, quite a few crates because it comes in at around 11,000 euros. But then again, it is limited and it looks really cool, doesn't it? Yep, only a production run of 20 will be made and it'll take 12 weeks to make each and every bike. A handmade, oh, lovely. Stunning. So this week, Rota finally released more details on that 13 group set. And to avoid any confusion, they've called it the 1x13. And yes, that is one chain ring. Oh, that's so last year, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is. It's cool though. It is cool. And it's ultra lightweight, only 1,785 grams. And it's still got that hydraulic shifting, yeah. which is also pretty cool. One of a kind, in fact. Mm. Rota also released the pricing. So the cheapest version will be from 2,600 euros, right up to 4,500 euros for the top of the range, most expensive version with a power meter. But as expensive as that sounds, it does include a wheel set because Rota are the only company currently manufacturing a hub that will take that 13 speaker set. I mean, this is super cool because it's offering such a wide variety of gear ratios for, well, all types of riding from flat to downhill to going up big mountains. But could this be a one-stop shop for, I mean, well, all group sets. Yeah, pretty much, because you leave the same cassette on the back and you just change your front ring. Maybe it is. It looks pretty smart, anyway. Yeah, it looks exciting. I kind of want to get my hands on one. So last week we were talking about that new aluminium, the AA7075, that opens up the door for new bikes being made out of new materials, yeah. which is super exciting. And you all got in touch and sent us some really cool stuff. So I reckon we should read some out. Yep, yeah, come on. Who's first, Chris? Zachary Lambert, foam. Some sort of light, high strength foam that is injected into a mold, creating any shape to tune ride and optimize aero. That's pretty right, this idea. is quite a cool idea, but yeah. could it work? Well, I have no idea, I'm not. I mean, you're gonna have to make some serious dense foam, aren't you, to be able to like, I mean, yeah. it'd be light. Yeah. Right, next one comes in from Joel Shearer. A cast iron or lead frame will be pretty sweet. Great for straight line downhills, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely downhill, probably not uphill because I mean, gravity might just, it must be really difficult. Marshall Ferron, I'd like to see a bike made with sinew, wood and horn like a traditional composite bow. Interesting, yeah. interesting. You do get bikes made out of wood and all sorts. Next one from Alex Conto Frios, 3D printed carbon graphene lugs, titanium tubes or vice versa. I'm pretty sure that there's a downhill bike out there that's currently using 3D printed lugs. I don't know what they're made of, but it might have that. That's the new Atherton bike, that one. That's oh, really? Quite exciting. Oh, that's exciting. Custom made bikes. And then James Mason with, I want to see more bamboo bikes. Yeah, me too, to be fair. I think they look wicked. And yeah, I think that's a really cool material to use. What about the pandas? What are they going to eat if you build bikes out of their bamboo? <laughs> Right, onto the weekly talking point. And we're talking about tech we wish we had when we were growing up and tech we well couldn't live without. 
Yeah, and for me, back in the 90s, it would have been custom insoles. Whilst you could definitely get them, I never had them. And nothing has done more for my comfort on the bike than actually having custom made insoles that fit my feet. Mm. And I'd never ride a bike again without them. The other thing I would have would be a mobile phone. So I could call home for help if I got stranded for whatever reason. That kind of happened more frequently back then. Tires weren't as good, so you'd puncture more often, double yep. punctures. And it would have been quite cool to have had a camera phone to take pictures of what I was doing, you know, so I could remember those experiences now. Although these days, I'd be happier with a camera and having no phone whatsoever. Yeah, but mate, you say that, but then you cannot live without Strava. I mean, you do every ride and straight away you upload it. So I'm not having that. Oh, that's not completely true. The amount of bike rides you don't know about. Oh yeah, because I probably wouldn't. Well, does it not count if it's not online? Well, it doesn't, no. Yeah. For me, I used to use a turbo trainer a lot as I was growing up, and I think a direct drive turbo trainer would have just enhanced my training so much better. Because I used to train on just a normal basic trainer that you know would skip, and I would just go through these so many amounts of tires. Yeah, uh, and I just couldn't you know get comfortable on it. Where now the direct charge turbos, the smart trainers, and all that kind of stuff, I just think you can just hone down on on like your training. Yeah, they're a lot Make smoother, really they're a lot less choppy. I know the ones that you mean back then, like yeah. you'd feel like it was like vroom, vroom, oh, vroom. It, was it was on off, on off. Yeah. So how about tech that you could never race without now? Like as in if you were to go out and do a bike race? Hmm, interesting one. I think for me, it's gonna be a power meter because I relied so heavily on a power meter during training and not even for, for racing as I was racing because I didn't really look at my watch that much, but more about breaking it down after the race so yep. I could see where I was, uh, how fit I was, if I needed to kind of train on my five minute power, my 10 minute power or whatever. So yeah, I think the, you know, the power meter has just been amazing for me. Right, see I would have gone with the head, head unit in races because even though I'd normally just have speed like your current speed and your duration, that would help with knowing what sort of position to ride. And if you're going fast, then of course mm. you top down a little bit. And if you've been riding for 15 minutes and you've not had a drink yet, you probably ought to be having a drink. And that really helps. And then I could gauge my kind of fueling throughout the ride based on what time it was. And I'd know how much energy I was expending in certain parts of the bunch I'd be in, depending on the speed. Oh, interesting. And whilst, you, you know, of course you could feel them intuitively, it did help to have more info there. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good point, Chris, but we would like to know what you like. So make sure you get in touch and uh, you either use the uploader or even just chuck in some comments down below in what you couldn't race without and what you wish you had back when you started. How about stuff that you wish we didn't have these days? That's also quite, a, quite an interesting mm. one. Last week, Hank and John asked you to get in touch with your bike-related products that you have turned into everyday items. And I think it's fair to say we were simply astounded by your response. Yes, so we thought it'd be a good idea to show you some of those. And we've got one in from Julia in Amsterdam. I have a growing pile of worn out chains, so I've been turning them into basic jewelry. These pendants and earrings were made from the chain I used to ride from in Germany to hell in Norway last year, 1,404 kilometers, 11 day bikepacking adventure. Nice. Look at those, I could see you wearing them, mate. Yeah. What, the earring or the, uh, the necklace? The earrings, 100%. Ah. Jamie's written in with an old Zip 404 650C rim, that's a rare size, and a bunch of old cogs. Living room, Schweinfurt, Germany. I see why you wanted me to read that one out. Yes. He used an old 650C rim and a bunch of old cogs to create a functional piece of living room decor. Oh, look at that. Apparently it's always four minutes past four. Ah, just, <laughs> just kidding, there's an actual clock in the mechanism there. Oh, that's cool, that. Yeah, that's really cool. That's probably the most inventive thing I've seen for a while. Yeah. Oh, good on you. Right, next in is one from Simon from Bristol. Hi, I just thought you'd like to see some of the things that I've built from old bike parts. Look at that. We've got a lamp, like a reading lamp, That's made out cool. of old cogs. I like that. That's quite cool, but I mean, very niche, isn't it? I, I, I don't think it would go in with my decor, but fair play, I think it looks cool. I don't think it would go with your decor, no. <laughs> no. Would it go with yours? Have you got like, it would right. be good in like a workshop. That would be perfect you know, in a workshop. In, in Canning's is Lair. In Canning's Lair, yeah, that would yeah. be cool. I'm Dan Begum from Who What Bike. Screw riding upgrades, buy upgrades. Now it's time for screw riding upgrades. Buy upgrades. All right, are you ready? Yeah, before we dig in, we have to go with last week's result. And Andrew from Tasmania was up against Tanner from Dallas. 
but with 53% of the vote, it was Tanner from Dallas. Yeah, so well done to you. Make sure you get in touch so we can get that apron off to you. Yeah, if it doesn't come through anytime soon, Ollie has close to 50 in his personal collection, so send him a DM. Yeah, it was 25 last week, and now it's 50, but yeah, he's obviously got quite a few. Hoarder. Yeah. Right, right then. let's get into some bikes. Ooh, Jim from Canada, who is up against Stephen from Indonesia. First off then, Jim, with a Marioni, sp Marinoni Special. There we go, it's pronounced it right. I always regretted selling my first bike, a 1977 Marinoni Special Beautiful. that was custom made for me. Ooh. Ooh. A few years ago, I decided to find a replacement. After a prolonged search, I found an 88 Marinoni with the same geometry as my dream machine. Perfect. It was in good condition, but suffering under the original owner's efforts to upgrade it. I bought it and took several months finding the bits and pieces to take it back in time. I stripped the bike, off came the saddle, the quill stem adapter, and the modern bars. Oh, a lot came off. Yeah, the original chorus group set was lovingly cleaned, buffed, lubed, and put aside. Beautiful. The frame was sent to Marinoni in Montreal for a repaint. The result was breathtaking. With, with much scouring of the internet and trips to the basement of all the local shops, I acquired the Cinelli stem and bars, roll saddle, campy aero pedals and clips, NOS, campy hubs, Ambrosia Excellence red anodized rims and the find of the adventure. A pair of diamond cycling shoes Winning. sat in a dusty box in one of the shops for decades and they fit like a glove. The end result, my dream bike was back in all its glory. No speed, cadence, power, or Just any other sensor. Old school, Him his machine, the classic retro. Ride. Tell us, Hank, what is he up against? Right, he's up against the 2016 Cannondale Neon Limited CAD 12. So it's kind of like a retro versus modern one nice. this week. Yeah, and his list of upgrades is, well, huge. So I'm gonna go through a few of them. We've got the SRAM Red GSW Titanium Bolts, Absolute Black Chainring, Ceramic Speed BB, Chimelo Zero Gravity Brakes, Look Kyo Carbon Pedals, Lightweight Teflon Cables, Carbon Tie Top Cap, Astute Skyline VT Saddle that I actually used last year, or year before, Candel Carbon Seat Post 27.2, Extra Light Hub, Sapim CX Race Spokes, Tune Skyline 25T Wheels, Continental Giro 22 millimeter tires and Cannondale black ink carbon fork zip SL handlebars Aerolite stem lightweight cork bar tape and how heavy was it? I mean this is crazy because it weighs in at 5.8 kilograms which I mean we all like light stuff but this is incredibly light for an alloy bike yeah it is and look at the pictures there's the original and wow oh wow that's a big transformation that's, a, that's beautiful though isn't it? well it's a lovely shaped frame for a start I love those upgrades yeah that's a well thought out bike. I bet that rides pretty quickly. Pretty I can't believe spotty. I liked it. Is that's a perfect hill climb bike. Yeah. You're lucky Ollie's not here because he'd be salivating nice all over background. the desk right now. He's even got a bottle with the, without the bottle cage. He's got it's one of those one, fabric bottles, yeah. I really like that. That's really cool. But it's not up to us, is it? It's not up to us. So make sure you get involved on the poll. Where is it, Chris? It's up over there, top left corner, top right corner, sorry. Yeah, so get involved on that because, well, it's a, it's a difficult one this week. It's a difficult one, I have to say. So we didn't have a bike of the week last week, so we're gonna go straight into this week with a big one. It's Sunweb's Cervelo P5 up against. The Trek Speed Concept from Trek Segafredo. Yeah, really, what, two amazing bikes, incredibly fast bikes and beautiful bikes. But we'd like to hear from you which one is better. So do get in touch in the poll. Stop there. Right, it's now time for the bike. Yes, yes. we love the bike vault. What do we need though? There's something missing. Well, that's the bell, but I mean, who's gonna ring it? I think we need to take it in turns to see who can do it the loudest. Okay, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Right, do you wanna start off? <coughs> right, do you wanna start off? Yep, cool. First up is Neil, Zeus C3 Aero sticker bombed in his wow. back garden, which is Edinburgh in Scotland. And um, that's a lot of stickers, Neil. That is an incredible amount of stickers. It's like a comic book stuck to a bike. I imagine it's quite heavy as well. Like stickers aren't no, light. No, it's not, it's not gonna be that heavy, is it? I reckon it's added a couple of hundred grams to the frame. Would you ride a bike like that? Well, I never have, so I probably never will. I did want to I think, think it looks it. cool, but it's just, I don't know if it's for me. Uh, Neil, I'm very sorry. I don't think it's for me either. I'm sorry, Neil. It's, it's gonna too be- too busy. It's gonna be a nice. It's it gonna is be nice. nice. It's still nice, and I, I respect your effort. Yes, 100%. 
Right, next up, it's... Zinge. The Zinge, Ooh. chapter three from Amherst, Massachusetts in the USA. Man, that is cool. That is cool. It's got a saddlebag and a mirror on and it. And some lights. And some lights. And it's some got mud parameter guards. mud guards. I mean, it's cool. It's very much a commuter bike. I wouldn't say it's kind of like... It's not a race bike. An epic. But it's, it's a practical it's bike, and I quite like it because of it. Would you give what would you give it? I mean, I, I'm gonna be really hard this week. I'm gonna have to give it a nice. I'm gonna mark you down because it looks like you've got a mirror, so it's gonna be a nice, not a super nice. Right, Chris, what have we got next? We have Curtis and his custom welded Ooh. bike from Portland, Oregon. Ooh. That's cool. beautiful. Mm. I love that. He's actually thought really hard about the background as well because that kind of fits perfectly in that kind of like sun shape thing. Yeah, and he custom welded it himself, in fact. Wow, did he? God, that's cool. epic. Yeah, to be fair, that's 100% a super nice from me. What about you? I, it is from me as well. Well, you know what to do, Chris. I do! <laughs> yes! Happy with that. That's a good effort. That is, that is quite something. Right, next up, we got Bruno and his Koga Colmaro Allroad from Belgium. Look at that. Vargem, Vargem. I mean, I love the colour, love the tan sidewalls. Yeah, I do like that. That looks like a lot of fun, that bike, actually. It does look like a lot of fun. I personally would have the kind of head unit pointing down a little bit, and I wouldn't have a saddlebag. Of course you would. I've seen your saddlebag video. Well, that's true, only on a few rides. But I think, I think that's a super nice. I think it's a super nice, yeah. The, the tires, everything. The paint job's cool. awesome. Yep. He's even got like a, a metal metal flasks as his bottle in a bottle cages. Yeah, full of full of drink. But I love it. I'm I'm a sucker for some tan sidewall tires. All right, George, you in? Come on, ring that bell. Super nice. <laughs> right. Well, who's he up against or not up against? Who's next? Oh, the Pinarello. Look at this. Classic looking bike, the Galileo from 1998. Camperbag wheels, record derailleurs. Bit of Veloce on there as well. I like that. That was such a cool bike when I started cycling way back, way back when. It was it was like a poster bike that was back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that is wicked, isn't it? Oh, it's super nice, isn't it? It's got to be. Handlebars have though. changed shape so much over the years. I can. I, I like that old shape. Old shape. Yeah, there's loads of places flat. to put your hands, aren't there? Yeah. Come on, oh, super nice. I could do it half because I just did the last one, so it's only uh, fair. Yeah, there you have it. So we got we had three super nices, which is actually pretty good, isn't it? It's, it's not week. bad. It's not bad. It's, not it's bad. better than last week. So make sure you send in your bikes and using the uploader tool in the description below if you want to find out how to do that because we love going through all your bikes, don't we? We do. The more, the better. Right, that's it for this week's Tech Show. I've enjoyed doing it with you, mate. It's been good fun, hasn't it? Yeah. If you want to see more videos coming up this week, John Cannings is over at the UAE Tour and he is sending plenty back for us to watch. Yeah, and if you're still up for some more tech, then check out this video where John turns a cheap bike into a super bike.